today I'm going to be talking about air handling in, in Node.js. So, I've been doing Node.js in production for about a year and a half now, and there's lots of really small mistakes that I've been doing for about a year, and I just don't realize them. There are a lot of these little things which I had to learn the hard way that I should be hopefully be able to teach you and you can not make the same mistakes I did. Now, to get started, a couple of questions. Who here has used Node? <laughs> okay, that's, that's good. Who here has done error handling? That, that's pretty good as well. Okay. So who here thinks that their errors in production are hiding from them and you just miss them? That, that should be everyone. Okay, so here, here's some code. Um, about once a week, I'll write something that looks like this. Does any, can anyone see the um, mistake here? No! <laughs> um, in this particular case, it's, it's actually quite easy to just simply forget to handle errors. If you're doing Node.js, one of the things you're going to have to learn is you're just going to have to drill it into your head. The error first, you always have to do something with them. If there's no if statement, but stop your callback, that, that, should be, that should be bad. So the simplest thing to do with error handling is to, to basically have your app, you do something, and then if there's an error, you take it and pass it up. P pass it up to whoever called you, I'm sure he'll deal with it, I'm sure, I'm sure he won't forget to handle it. Now, these are the simple cases. Sometimes you actually have to do error handling. So if you're doing something that's slightly more complex, in this particular example, you know, we're doing some of things, it fails, wait a second. This is one of the rare cases where you have an error, and we know what to do with it. So, grab the error, there's no file, do something else. In this particular case, you just create one. If there's any other error, like file systems read only, um, there's no disk in the machine, or like anything else, you have to remember to um, do something with it. Um, in this case, it's possible. So that, that's, that's like simple things. The more difficult ones are the web apps. So you're building, you're building a web app, you've got your like as simple, bare bones as it can be, request handler, you know, get some user input, do some stuff with it, and send it back to the user. Now in this particular case, we have to do something, but there's no callback. So figure out what to do. Now, one of the things I did for a very long time, which is in production, was okay. You know, there's no callback, it has to go somewhere. So what, what's the only place I could write it to? Well, the response, you know. Just write it. Uh, literally, like, you do, there's some code in our, our app where it's literally writing a string to your message. Um, now, this isn't ideal. And it took me a long time to, to like, figure out that's not ideal. Does, does, does anyone have any idea? No translation. No translation. That, that, that's okay. All well, our customers are English. They want to learn English, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you know, and their response with invite JSON is pretty bad. Um, that's that's another thing actually. If if you've got a web app and it takes JSON in, the error always has to be JSON out. Don't, don't return like a nice error page with like a 500 line header of HTML. That's, that's a bad idea. The, the, the problem here is that your, your server, your application is not actually handling the error. Um, one of the ways you can solve this is just, um, you know, instead of handling the error, you pass it up to somebody else. I'm, I'm sure whoever you pass it up to will handle the error. Um, this is actually this is actually kind of cool to pass uh, like express has this for the next callback. 
allows you to put your error handling like in your actual like HTTP server in one place, um, which is nice because previously in our production app we had um, three different helper functions called send error, and they all did something different. Okay, so so the, this this is just just moves problem. So one one of the first things that took me a long time to realize, and some, someone had to literally sit down and tell me, that sending the error out of your process is, is not handling. It's errors that are sent out of your process, just like, just like that, those are the hidden errors in your app. You know, they flow, they flow nicely through React, they're like a nice little error objects in memory, and then they go out, and they're gone, and you'll never see them again, and you'll never know they've happened. Like an analogy would be, you know, you've got you've got a nice, nice high quality space shuttle, and since Node is you know being used in production, you're using like Node.js on your um, nice little space travel travel vehicle, and that's 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 perfectly fine. And then whenever your your space shuttle has an error, well, you just open up the hatch, take the error, put a nice nice little glass box, shine it up a bit and just put it out there. Like get it, get it out of the space shuttle, somebody else's problem. Um, and that's that's why there are terrible, terrible accidents. So the the, the fundamental thing is that your, your process needs to handle errors. And, and more importantly, when you're building a new web app, and we've made this mistake. We we sit down a couple of months ago we're gonna build like a nice new web app. Get it right, it's going to be clean. You pick the best templating library, pick the best flow control library, pick the best express middleware, and then we get to think, we forgot to think about error handling. So our application ran in production for about a month without having any logger, any error handling, any clustering, any um, recovery or failure modes. So it's important that you think about that. So. One of the ways, one of the simplest ways to deal with your errors is you choose to log them. These sure already show you, showed you Bunyan. Bunyan. Bunyan is pretty awesome. Um, the things we do, and literally what we do in production is we just log the request. If you have a session contacts, log that, that's, that's great. It lets you track exactly what's going wrong. Um, if you give every error an ID, that's fantastic. Because then when you give the user a 500 page and has that nice little unique ID, when you get the screenshot from a user reports, you know exactly what's wrong. And it's not just you know, a screenshot saying, unexpected error. And if possible, um, storing the name and arguments of whatever like business or application logic was invoked, it's fantastic as well. But that's just an example of how we use Bunyan. Uh, one, one of the things with error handling that's going to trip you up is uh, error objects in V8 uh, do not cleanly JSON serialize. Like you have to, you have to like shallow copy the error and then shallow copy the stack and the name on it. And it's just that's frustrating. So as far as using Bunyan, um, Bunyan has nice serializers, so you can figure it when you print a request. It just prints just a subset you need and some nice computer properties. Okay. So that's just the error strategy. Um, when you're doing HTML errors, that's pretty simple. You send your, your you know, you send a, some kind of 500 page or some kind of like form with like nice validation errors in place. All nice and controlled by the server. When you're doing JSON and you build an API server in Node, again, one of the things we did for a very long time is, you know, handle the request response, do some stuff. If there's an error, just, just send, send, send the message. Send the message string. That, that, sh that should be enough. Um, and then in your front end code, you've made your request to the server. And the body comes back, and you can check the message and just check, check the back expression. Because the message string is never going to change, that, that's perfectly fine. And um, you do this for like, you know, all time attributes with all different little messages. And it's, uh, it's not ugly at all, 
it's 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 quite nice. Ah, uh, yeah. No. So, does anybody have an idea of what's wrong with treating errors as strings? Like any suggestions? If they're localized, you can go change. That's true. I haven't I haven't thought about that. Like, nah, we never localize it. But that, that's 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 not that's not that's not a real problem. We don't have to deal with that. I'm here. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so one of, one of the one of the problems is that um, errors are not strings, and it's quite important actually. Uh, even in your node code, if you're building any kind of async API, anything has a callback on it, you have to make sure that the error it, it can't be a string, it can't be true, um, it, it can't be a, like a numeric error code. It should be an error object. It should be an error object with um, a stack on it. Nicely created. Um, that's quite important for domains. It's quite important for actually being able to introspect your errors. And anybody that's um, trying to do some stuff with it will be happy. So one approach that you can take is you can you can actually start thinking about your errors. You can start thinking about what they are. Um, this is bad. This is this is terrible actually. Like, like you shouldn't be sending an object literal, that you should be like extending some error object with some like properties. But I didn't think of that. So that's um, that's another example of like just not being quite perfect enough. So an error, you can think of it as having a message, having a stack, uh, you have certain types of errors, and you have all kinds of metric data on them. And specifically for validation purposes. It's really useful to put metric information on your errors so that you know how to deal with them. In this particular case, you know, it's an email error, so we should just put it on there, and then web deal, whichever client deals with it, it can it can it can be clever and take those ten individual blocks for each different type of error and crush them into one. And then hopefully you should realize that you can change the messages as much as you want. And they can be whatever language you want, but your little your meta information should always be the same. So that's that's really useful. And now whenever whenever I, I see any kind of like regular expression tests on anything coming back from the server, I just think. Oh. <sighs> so another problem we had in production was we, we built out a nice, nice shiny payment system. I showed you payment server, we still the credit cards, it would be fantastic. It's like really nice code, really, really thorough and detailed. Put it out there in production, and then we get we get screenshots coming back from our customers. We filled in their credit card information, and I said nice at the top. Could not create customer. And they filled in they filled in their credit card details and they're like, what's a customer? And we realized we actually have no idea what errors were flowing through that. We had no insight into it. We, we, we just didn't know what was going on. So one, one of the things, like the first, the first naive approach was to just be like, okay, you know, this piece of payments code is really important. You know, if error, just always log. Just always log whatever, log the method name, log the callback name, log the arguments of the error, um, log, log it into your logger, log it into your database, log it, log it wherever you want, wherever you can get visibility to it. And that helps a ton. It allows us to look at our errors and be like, oh, oh wait a second, these are the type of problems that are in our application code, and these are the methods and the arguments, and this is like exactly what we can see. And that, that, that helps a bunch. Now this, this is really frustrating. Um, there are a couple of techniques around this. Uh, one of them is to, so what you've got in your application, you've got some logic somewhere, you can a little object literal that has some asynchronous methods on it. So, you can just wrap it. You can, you can wrap it, wrap all your methods, grab the callback, intercept it, uh, call the original method with a different callback, and then if there's an error, logging the name of the method, and the arguments and the error, it's fantastic. Um, 
That, that's a really nice visibility. That, this is a slide code, there's a bunch of other stuff in there that you should handle. But this, this helped us a ton. Okay. So those, those were some of the easy errors. Um, when it comes to error handling, there are some things that are more subtle. There are some things that are more difficult. For example, this code here, there's a bug here. And it's hard to spot. Does anyone have any, any ideas? What might be an issue here? It's, it's actually really difficult. Because you, you don't realize that if the user doesn't exist, it's going to crash the process. And we'll never escape these. Like, no matter what, these will always have a production. Like, at least 50% of our production crashes are someone, someone forgot to check whether something was done. So, this is tough. It's tough to deal with errors that throw. Uh, one approach is to try catch. You know, Express will put a try catch around your request handler. But it's not in a request handler, it's in a callback. So, thankfully, no call, there's some nice work to deal with this. And it's pretty awesome. So, the main in a nutshell, take any foreign exception. And they route it to where you can actually deal with it. So they're like an uncall exception for each request response. Now to use them, you, you know, go to wherever in your application your server is or your router is, and you know, wherever you're actually going to be calling your right handler, you got a little bit of code, create a domain, add an error listener, and then run your right handler within the domain. Now, what running your right handler in the domain means is not course basically going to figure out and make sure that every single callback that you use in your right handler recursively is attached to the error listener. So, any further exceptions will go to the error handler, and it'll be great. It'll, it'll be fantastic. You, you'll actually be able to close that request response with a 500 error. And there are some opinions about what you should do when you get one of these errors. Um, one approach is to just think that there's no problems and to keep the server up because there's no there's no hard open sockets, there's no memory leaks, there's no none of those problems exist. Um, another approach is to you have to shut down the server. You have to shut down another process because you're in an undefined state. Um, Actually, figuring out how to shut down a node process without screwing over all your open web sockets, pain in the ass. Um, my recommendation for that is to look at the cluster documentation in node call, but it's kind of out of scope. So, to round up, some problems don't have any errors. Some errors will stay hidden from you permanently. You just can't handle them, you can't catch them, you can't log them. Your server is just going to crash, there's going to be a call dump. And the best thing you can do is you're hopefully running on joint, you open up MDB on the call bump, and you just have a look. Um, that's kind of out of scope, because MDB is kind of large, and I don't have a joint VM available. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs>